My big question that I'm going to start with is, can technology make you more creative? This is kind of a tricky question, really, because it depends on a lot of different things, right? I think we go this way. So I'm going to turn it into, how can I work with technology to be more creative myself? So this is, this is, this is more interesting. And the thing is, when we talk about technology, we really quickly go to artificial intelligence these days. And when you think intelligence and creativity, you think these things sort of go together. And the fun thing about creativity is that you're often creating these processes that result in great performances or in great paintings. But you usually only see the performance. You don't get to see all the steps there are in there along the way. And AI is kind of the same way. We end up seeing the patterns that, it, that it's generating at the end. We don't see all the bad things it came up with or all the bugs. So we tend to think of these things as being a bit magic. But they're not quite that way. So I started out as a dancer and choreographer originally. And these were kind of a funny place to be because you spend a lot of time developing these skills and techniques that you can use at any time. So you can walk into a rehearsal with 15 dancers and look exactly the same as them, operating at the same expertise, or hopefully better, if you're lucky. But you also need to be able to solo. And so along with all these techniques that you've spent years developing, you're also spending time developing your personal style, which requires getting to know yourself quite well. And we need to be able to go back and forth between these things, but sometimes we run into some issues. Such as, if you're going to go choreograph then, you've spent all this time developing this expertise, but it helps you out in some ways. It's given you this great foundation to work from. But at the same time, when you go to think you have a great idea for a new project, and you're going to take a couple of, uh, you're going to develop some work to start that, sometimes the work you're developing looks similar to your last three projects. And that's kind of challenging, because in a way, your expertise has become a habit, which can be a good thing. But when you're trying to push yourself further and trying to figure out how to be really creative, that can be challenging. Your habits can, your expertise can start to get in your way. So I also was really fascinated with technology along the way. And the thing that blew my mind when I first started programming was how you take a problem and you have to break it down to a series of steps. Now, a computer doesn't just read your mind to do things. You have to really articulate what that is. You have to define what you're doing, create a series of steps, and have a logical flow through them. And all these steps accumulate, creating some sort of end product. And I immediately thought, well, isn't that the same as choreography? Because you still have to develop some movement material, make it into some, uh, some steps, put a couple of phrases together, and you have a piece. So, where's, um, so it's all about the steps. And the steps are really important, because that's where we have choice in what we're doing. And we can develop a system that's going to do these things by itself if we really wanted to. There's two fascinating systems. Composer David Cope developed a system um, that can generate box music. And Harold Cohen developed the Aaron system, which can paint portraits of people and landscapes in the 1970s. And I've been to conferences where people spend days talking about how is a system creative? How do we evaluate if the system's creative? Could we as humans even evaluate that? Or should a machine be evaluating it? These are kind of tricky questions. And you know, they, they, they work, sort of, in music and, and painting. But as a dancer, I wasn't quite sure how to bring that back. Because the thing is that I get to work with humans, which are these amazing things that you know, are living and breathing in the studio. And every person I work with, with them is pretty much collaborative, because I can develop movement and give it to them, and they've got that skill and expertise to make it look perfect, whether there's 15 of them or one. I can go solo, do something different that is unique to them, and come right back. And they have these skills. But they have the same problem, so that their expertise can become a habit. It can get in their way sometimes. So it seems like it would make sense to be kind of simple to just toss some technology into this. We've got cameras and drawing tablets, 
motion capture systems, Fitbits, iPhones, all of these things are fabuli fabulous and right at our fingertips. But the problem is that a motion capture system can't make you dance any better. It can only capture what you can already do. So I started trying to play with some other systems. I played with a little bit of AI. Um, I worked with genetic algorithms, which is model evolution. And I started just generating some wild dance positions. And this was fun for a little bit, but the problem was that I could do these things and always come back to my habit. My expertise is still there. So I developed some, some fancier rules, tried to do things that are a little bit even wilder, but same thing. It was exciting for a minute, and then my expertise took over. And this was very frustrating for a while, until I read a book by Patricia Stokes, who's a psychologist. He talked about the idea that if you're just getting ideas to be more creative all the time, of course you're going to have a problem because you're taking your expertise with you. And while that's a good thing, you need your expertise to do this kind of work. Um, you also need ways to get around it. And artists have developed a lot of tools and tricks for doing this over the years. But one of the things that Patricia Stokes mentioned was the need to identify what your habits are and be really honest with yourself about how to engage with them. So if you can pull back on some things while being creative and doing something really unique to you at the same time, that's when you can really be creative. So the thing I love about working with technology is that it is a great tool for collaboration because both computers and humans have strengths and limitations. So computers are great at crunching data, at finding patterns quite quickly, but humans are pretty good at, at bringing their memories and their experiences and their sensations into the studio with them. They can make meaning with something right away. But the problem is that humans or computers have a hard time tracking that kind of magic and playfulness. So that kind of leaves you with, are you just stuck with an algorithm? But the other thing is that we've still got these humans who are bringing their habits and their expertise, again, important, but sometimes gets in their way. So computers are quite good at being able to generate things that can inspire us while not having all the baggage of their history with them. So what I ended up doing, just to let you in, is that I spent a lot of time evaluating what my movement habits were and where I wanted to feel safe. And of course, it would be that I was stable, symmetrical. Um, I tend to do curvy limbs with, with flowy energy, because those are very human things. So I flipped it, and I tried to make things that were unstable, asymmetrical, with really hard joints, and I was amazed at how quickly I was able to start doing things that did start to feel quite new. And I ended up developing a system with this that I've used now many times to choreograph. And you can't tell that the end choreography was made with this. You don't see that technology was part of this process at all. But it's been really unique in helping me find new ways of working with it. And I've tested this with other choreographers who've had similar experiences, which is fascinating. Ooh, and we're going to now. There we go. So this also works in other places, though, as well. So I've been on teams with people that have applied this in graphic design. Um, there's a system that also uses genetic algorithms in order to let designers give seed material. And then they are manipulating and creating variations of this with a bunch of rules around color and shape and variations and palettes. And so, and then with music, there's a system that has been working with improvisation with live performers. So it's generating music depending on what they're doing. But improvisation is special because you are composing in the moment. And so with that, the system can have an attention that wanders around the space and shifts depending on what it feels like. So, to go back to this initial question of how can I work with technology to be more creative, it's a challenging thing because AI can't just solve your problems, and neither can your iPhone, unfortunately. But you can deal with it yourself, and it really does come back on to you because you get to notice your system and the rules that you use and how you twist and turn those rules. And you also get to notice your habits 
and figure out what encourages you to move beyond them. And so really, if you take on that responsibility yourself, you have the tools to be creative in new ways. You just have to have the courage to intervene with it. Thank you.